The spiritual search, Matthew 7, verse 9. What man is there among you who, if his son asked for bread, would give him a stone? Hopefully nobody I know. All right, let's look this up in my Bible, Matthew 7, verse 9. The chapter title is Ask, Seek, and Knock. We all know verse 7. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Verse 8. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which one of you, if his son asks for bread, would give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, would give him a snake? I don't think so. If you then, though you were evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So true, right? All right, let's read this devotion. <clears throat> Hi! The illustration of prayer that our Lord used here is one of a good child who is asking for something good. We can talk about the prayer as if God hears us regardless of what our relationship is to him. Matthew 5, 45. Never say that it is God's will to give you what you ask. Don't faint and give up, but find out the reason you have not received. Increase the intensity of your search and examine the evidence. Is your relationship right with your spouse, your children, and your fellow students? Are you a good child in those relationships? Do you have to say to the Lord, I have been irritable and cross, but I still want spiritual blessings? You cannot receive and will have to do without until you have the attitude of a good child. Oh, that's really good. I'm going to read that again. You cannot receive and will have to do without until you have the attitude of a good child. We mistake defiance for devotion, arguing with God instead of surrendering. We refuse to look at the evidence that clearly indicates that we were wrong. Have I been asking God to give me some money for something I want while refusing to pay someone I owe him? Uh-oh, that's not good. Have I been asking God for liberty while I am withholding it from someone who belongs to me? Have I refused to forgive someone and have I been unkind to that person? Have I been living as God's child among my relatives and friends? See Matthew 7, 12. I am a child of God only by being born again and as his child, I am good only as I walk in the light, 1 John 1, 7. For most of us, prayer simply becomes some trivial religious expression, a matter of mystical and emotional fellowship with God. We are all good at producing spiritual fog that blinds our sight. But if we will search out and examine the evidence, we will see very clearly what is wrong, a friendship, an unpaid debt, or an improper attitude. I love this next line. There is no use praying unless we are living as children of God. I'm reading that again for me. There is no use praying unless we are living as children of God. Then Jesus says regarding his children, everyone who asks receives, Matthew 7, 8. So yes, we can't just be, you know, all full of ourselves and sinning against other people and still ask God and expect things. He's, he's more concerned about our heart and our attitude being right than giving us things, right? And we also need to pray with the right motive. And there's a big difference between wants and needs, isn't there? And he pretty much says he's going to give us our needs, but maybe not always our wants. So anyway, I hope that just shed some light on your prayer life today and that um, you just come to before him with a pure heart because he does want to bless us, but he wants us mostly to have a right relationship with him, with other people around us, and just to have a pure heart. So my friend, have a good heart today, and I will see you tomorrow. You can order your own copy of the My Utmost for His Highest devotional book by going to utmost.org. And I would love to answer any questions you may have about faith in Jesus. Just email me through my website, nancyjoytoyou.com. And I hope you go out and shine for Him today. See you tomorrow.